Hi, everyone. Hi, David. Hi. Intimate setting. Yeah, very, uh, very intimate room. How are you guys doing this afternoon? Second to last. <laughs> Who uses Facebook Messenger? All right. <laughs> that made me happy just right there. Right. How does it feel? <laughs> it feels awesome. So you got a few users here. Uh huh. That doesn't. That means we don't have to explain the product. That's good. And um, what we're really going to talk about is chatbots today, mm -hmm. and how Messenger is playing a role a role with this. So, so maybe we should start with with that. Just going straight into it. So how there is a lot of PR around it. All the tech and non-tech uh, media are more and more talking about chatbots. Yet it's like 20 years old. We we could say there are chatbots you know, at the beginning of the internet. So what do you, can you define what's a chatbot? Yeah, so I think, you know, the old definition of what a chatbot or bot is, uh, is not really valid today because like the old definition was almost a terminal command interface um, and you could program uh, scripts based responses. Uh, whereas now, it's uh, a much more complex and refined experience that has not only conversational elements to it, but buttons, images, videos, all kinds of different things. Um, and it leverages machine learning and AI that didn't exist at the time of scripted bots uh, that make the experience a lot better. So you're right that um, there was a lot of hype um, and then a lot of other noise about like, you know, bots not being good. Um, and I think, you know, it's never as good as it's portrayed and it's never as bad as it's portrayed. Uh, and I think, you know, six months in, now we've opened a platform at our big developer conference, F8, in April. Six months in, we now have a very healthy ecosystem of partners that help brands build really good experiences for Messenger. And, uh, and what we we're seeing is that not in the 33,000 bots that are on the platform right now. Not all of them are great. You know, it's the same thing happened when... You have 30,000 people cutting on, on this. We have 33,000 developers, 34,000 bots. And, um, and, you know, what's happening there is basically, you know, the same thing happened when apps were launched or the web was launched. The first couple of websites were really ugly and not functional. The first couple of apps were really bad. And the first couple of bots on Messenger were also pretty bad. Um, and, you know, six months in, now we're starting to see really amazing experiences, very engaging experiences. So on the before bot. we talk about the, the best experiences on Messenger, can we talk about the space in general? So who are the biggest players? There is Amazon Echo. That's a bot. You talk, you talk to it with voice. It also has a messenger, uh, sorry, it also has a developer platform. And then there is, of course, if you stay on voice, Siri and uh, Google just came, came with Google Allo. That's not voice, it's text. Mm -hmm. What are the other key players? Well, I think, I mean, there, there are two worlds, right? There's the world of like digital assistance like assistance and AI-powered assistance, and then there's a world of like platforms, and we play in both. Um, in the case of the Messenger platform, it's a world where developers can come, reach the 1 billion monthly active users that are using Messenger on a monthly basis, and you know a lot of them on a daily basis, um, and build experiences that are at the intersection of mobile web, which is imperfect in many ways, and apps that takes a lot of friction to get downloaded on phones and for permissions to be turned. And you have your own assistant, you have M. We have M that How you've that been going? using. Um, and M is going actually really well. We've learned a lot. And you know, it's AI, and AI needs a lot of data to learn. We humans can learn with very little data sets. And AI needs a lot of data to get better and better. So we've been feeding that AI instance a lot more data. We've been assisting it with humans. It's getting better and better. And now we're hoping that uh, certain elements of those capabilities will come to everyone in Messenger um, sometime soon. Um, and also, in the meantime, we've, we're feeding Bot Engine, which is this uh, developer uh, tool that we're offering to all of our developers to build on Messenger, on any platform, by the way. And that so has anyone can from build a bot now on Messenger? Yes, everyone can build a bot. And do, do they need to be approved or they just stop? No, you can, do, you can build. And unless you're actually breaking uh, policy, then uh, you're good to go. And like, like what? Like I mean, there are a bunch of things that you can't do uh, on Facebook in general, and that applies also to Messenger. I think, you know, the really interesting thing to say is that, you know, there are a couple of things that are working really well, and I, I'd love to talk a little bit about that because, you know, at the lowest possible utility level in terms of com complexity, 
customer care, customer support on Messenger is awesome. Like, no one wants to call a large company. Press one to right. get to talk to representatives. I mean, it's a really shitty experience, and it's not because the large companies don't want to provide a good service, it's just they can't. And the phone is a thing where you have to be fully present. And voice yeah. is decreasing anyway. Yeah, I mean, people don't like making calls in general, but like calls to large companies like rank pretty high up in the things you don't want to do. Um, and so the vision is to get every business to be able to Yes, and so what business. we've seen is now we have financial services, like, you know, big banks. We have American Express where you can link your card and have interactions with American Express. We have Rogers in Canada, Sprint in the U.S., Globe in the Philippines. And what we've seen is all of those large companies that are now providing customer service on Messenger have been able to increase customer satisfaction by up to 60%, reduce costs by 75% by automating some of the responses. Uh, so that's one use case. So if I'm unhappy with United, say, which right. happens, instead of going to shout this on Twitter to all the followers, now you go on Messenger and you, you get to an agent there. Right. And you can complain, but right. it stays no, there. But the beauty with that is that like, what we want to build is a capability so that every business can build all of its customer lifecycle interactions inside of Messenger. So it can be at the end of the spectrum on customer service, or it can be at the very beginning of the spectrum on customer acquisition. And on that front, we're seeing like, huge success stories of companies that are actually driving traffic to Messenger to complete a subscription to sell something and like the results are actually much better because if you redirect people to a website once they've closed the tab they're gone so so if i'm a small business if i'm this awesome restaurant in lisbon uh -huh. um, I, I used to have a website now i have a facebook page yes and now you're basically saying you, you need to be reachable on messenger for booking for example for customer service and a little, you also launched six months ago, you, you can have like a website within Messenger now. So, so how do you, so give me an example of cool like bots that are yeah. being built by. So I mean, small businesses can turn on messaging for their page and if they're responsive, then they'll be featured in search results. And today we're announcing Messenger Platform 1.3, which has better search because like we had a lot of complexities with a lot of pages uh, that were duplicates. If you're a big chain and you have a lot of uh, entries and a lot of subpages, it's complicated to find the one that you want. But like, so if you're a small business and you turn on messaging your responsive, you'll be featured in search results. You, people can reach you and you can respond from the pages admin app or uh, from the web. Yep. Uh, if you're a large business, you can build automation or you can uh, tap into the hundreds of partners that we have like from Salesforce to um, you know, uh, chat fuel, uh, Zendesk on customer support, and I can like go on and on. Like lots of like ecosystem players that are actually. So you can just stay in Messenger now. Right, you can stay in Messenger, and like so, a couple of examples that are really cool. So, Absolute built a bot that gave away free cocktails. Uh, that's a pretty good idea. Um, so, so you go to Messenger and you... You go to Messenger, you interact with a virtual bartender, they send you a list of cocktails with beautiful cocktail photos, you pick the one you want, you say the city you're in, uh, they point you to a bar nearby, they give you a code, you walk in, you give the code to the bartender, and then you have a notification for a Lyft ride home because we have Lyft built into the Messenger platform. So what they've seen as a brand is they've seen a 3x redemption rate, so three times more people ended up in bars drinking free cocktails. How many cocktails? cocktails have been distributed? Actually, I don't know, but that's a good question. Probably too many, uh, or not enough. But uh, I think that those types of things are very hard to do with mobile web. And you're not going to download an app just to get a free cocktail, or maybe a few of us will. But you know what I'm saying? It's like, this is the perfect type of thing where you have persistence and you can actually take people to the end of the journey in a, in a very personalized and conversational way. Okay, so, t so you have some news today. Yeah. For the brands yeah. and for developers. Yeah. Now we have, we have big news and, and the reason like we've been very slow to find and build more ways for distribution is that in the early months uh, after we opened the platforms, the experiences weren't that great. So you don't want to build massive distribution for an experience that's not great. Uh, now the experience is actually quite good in you know, some of those verticals that I've talked about, and, and there are a lot more. But like, now what we enable developers for the first time is to actually buy newsfeed ads that open threads in Messenger in one tab. And that's a big deal, because for the first time, advertisers can actually target their audience and take them into a one-on-one -on -one thread in Messenger with identity. 
And at the scale of one plus billion people on Messenger, it's really the first time any advertiser wait, wait, so can do that. So as a Messenger user, I will now be bombarded by brands? No, no, no. You, like, the rules that we've established when we launched a platform haven't changed. So you cannot, a brand cannot contact you or any bot cannot send you any message. So Absolute cannot send me a message to take. Unless you open the thread with them and you start messaging them. Okay. So you're in control, you have controls in the thread to block messages and do whatever you need to do, but you need to open that thread in the first place. And so now with Newsfeed ads, which you know, arguably Newsfeed is one of the best intent creation surfaces in the world because of our targeting and reach capabilities, and Messenger, we want to think that Messenger is going to be the best intent completion surface. So those two, because they share the same identity graph, work really well one with another. So this is one of the news that we announced today, that we have opened that globally for everyone. So every developer can now buy newsfeed ads that open Messenger threads in one tap and then take people through their experience and build the lifetime relationship that they want to build inside of Messenger because of the canonical nature of those threads. So that's news one. So is that going after, I'll get back to news two, but is that going after email marketing basically? We used to, are you trying to replace email? For some use cases, yes, not all use cases. Um, and you know, email is good at a bunch of different things that, and, and I think it'll remain good for those things. But interacting with companies and email is like really bad. I mean, most emails you receive from companies come from a no reply at. Like, how come can these brands or these companies send me messages, but I can't send them messages? Like, that's like that's True. messed up. So if you open a thread, it's you know both ways. You can interact. You can automate a lot of things. You can have interactions. You can have buttons. You can have rich elements. You can't do that in emails. The only thing you can do in emails is paste a link behind an image, and then you go to the web, right? How do you see the bots versus humans? Uh, I, I see some brands starting to do a bot, and like, users don't know it's a bot. Yeah. Should brands say, hey, I'm oh, a yeah. bot? Yeah. What we've seen is like Meetic and Friends has done a really good job, for instance, um, at building a whole dating experience. Meetic is par part of Match.com and Friends. They've built a whole dating experience inside of uh, Messenger, and they actually gave a characters names. So it's Lara from Meetic, um, and uh, and they're very clear. It's a virtual assistant, um, and then if you need customer support, they can actually have humans come in and help. Uh, Burberry just launched a, a really well-designed bot today. Like, so if you go m.me slash Burberry and you want to play with it, um, it's actually really nice because it combines brand storytelling uh, with an automated gift recommendation engine for the holidays. Uh, but then if you want to chat with someone, you can chat with someone at Burberry and they'll help you. Uh, and so that hybrid approach of having partly automated inter interactions and then uh, the ability for humans to jump in is, I think, the, the best combination. It's very interesting. I think the customer service will have to be different because people will have to know that they interact live. You yeah. can't really filter it. What's yeah. the second news? The second news is Messenger Platform 1.3. So since we opened the platform in April, we've been updating it uh, on a regular basis. Uh, last update enabled like uh, native enhanced web views, payments. Um, and now with uh, 1.3, what we're launching uh, are two things. One thing, it's a little geeky, but I know that this audience will actually enjoy that. Um, we have those m.me links. So you can have m.me slash Burberry, m.me slash David M, slash Loic. Um, and uh, now developers can actually add a parameter to that URL. So let's say that you're looking at a car on a car manufacturer website, and you have a messenger button for a specific model on the model page. Now, when you tap on that thing and you open messenger, you will have an image of that car, and uh, the brand can actually assist you, respond to questions. It you can figure that. that right. So you can have a parameter that's added to that URL, and so it can be used for performance tracking or performance marketing. You know, you know where, where those clicks are coming from, or it can be used to customize the experience to where you're coming from. So that's a big deal for developers. They've been asking us to do that for the platform for a while, and you know, now we, we have this live as of today. Uh, we're also adding vertical lists that are enabling you know, publications, e-commerce sites, et cetera, to have categories with a lot of items in it um, natively inside of Messenger, um, and uh, better search for bots and automated experience inside of Messenger on top of all of the advertising solutions that I described. Those are the two news? Yes. There is one thing which uh, I use at every event I go to, and I, uh -huh. I go to a lot of events, so, so this is the case here as well. But right. um, I bet you have noticed the pattern is people create a group 
mm -hmm. on Messenger, which is they just add names. And for Web Summit, it can become really big because there are many people and it becomes very, very uh, noisy. So each time there is a room for that. Is there, is there anything coming on that front? Well, you know, we, we test a lot of features before releasing them. Um, but I mean, there's one thing that we've started testing, and we're, start, we're actually going to start testing in a couple of days, um, which is that you can create groups. And when you create a group on Messenger, and Messenger is great for groups because you have seen heads and you know who has seen up to what point in the conversation, it's all about people. Like, a group is about the people that you add to the group. And what we've been wanting to do for a while is create an environment where you can create a group around the topic, not around the people. And so there's a product feature that we call Rooms that we're starting to test that uh, enables you to create a topic. So it can be Web Summit. And you can have a unique URL. And people who have that URL can join automatically, or you have to authorize every single one of them. But like, you can create a, a dynamic group around one topic. So it could be one of your passions. It could be a live event. It could be the elections tonight. It could it's be, be right? m.me slash, slash something. Um, and uh, we think that's like really interesting. And we'll have discovery surfaces, so you can discover the rooms that your friends have created and all these things. So it's starting to test in a couple of days. And then if everything goes well, will go live globally soon. Great. We don't have that much time. Can you give me the broad picture on how do you see Messenger like in you know, five, 10 years? Something right. like a broader, like do you see email going? Voice is going down. Text messaging in general going up. Yeah. Uh, it seems to me that you took a lot of our time on email versus email. I mean, I'm spending more and more time on Messenger. But like, for example, SMS, it's a pain. If you change the number, you have to change. So. People yeah. like can use Messenger to. Yeah, I think. I mean, there are a couple of things that are really interesting. Like, first of all, Messenger is the only messaging platform with a billion users that doesn't use phone numbers as you know the main graph, right? And if we were to reinvent telecommunications today, I wouldn't give you a phone number. Like, why would you need a random series of digits to identify who you are? Like, on your badge for the Web Summit, it doesn't say a phone number; it's your name. And Messenger is a platform where you can search and find 1.7 billion people around the world and communicate with them right now. And this is a thing that's like fairly misunderstood. It's, you know, originally Facebook was only, Facebook Messenger was only to communicate with your Facebook friends. And now Messenger is to communicate with everyone because we built a system that enables you to do that. And I feel that like, you know, that's a big advantage. So if you fast forward, uh, you'll have not only people but businesses because we have the real identity graph that plays really well with newsfeed. So you'll be able to not only have more and more communications with your friends, your loved one, your family, have groups, have rooms, have different types of interactions. Voice, video. Voice and video is a huge deal. We've announced it lately, like a couple of months ago. What's the we, result versus Skype? I mean, we have 300 million monthly active users of mobile video and voice calling. Are you so bigger than point, Skype now? I believe we, on mobile, I believe we are. You are bigger than Skype. On mobile, I believe we are. I, I don't know because wow. I don't have their data, but 300 million monthly active users of video and voice calling on mobile, I think we're almost there or so there. In six months, you, you passed. Um, but like video calling is a big deal. We've been working on video quality for a long time, and we're investing very heavily in video and voice quality. Um, and I had a, a video call the other day here in Lisbon in a car. I wasn't driving. Uh, and the experience was awesome. And it was on the cellular network, and uh, the other person was in California. So it was my wife. Uh, in California, and the conversation was great. And so, like, I'm very proud of the team and what they did there. We're out of time. Do you have any any last, you know, message for the audience about that they should code bots on Messenger? No, look, I think you know, don't don't always believe the overhype and don't always believe the down hype. Uh, you know, those are cycles. Uh, just look at how you build a quality experience. Don't do it if you build a bot or an experience in Messenger. Don't do it just to check a box and say, hey, I have this presence. But really think about this user experience that's a different new form of user experience. Uh, and really build for it thinking about the tools that you have, like the uh, UI elements, the buttons, and all of the conversational elements that you can bring to create a truly unique and delightful experience. And then you'll have great success on the platform. Awesome. Thank you, David. Thank you, Luke.